Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're talking about the Word 2019 exam and we're looking at the fourth domain called Create and Manage References. Overall, this accommodates for 5 to 10% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at this with me. In today's video, we're going to cover the subdomains Create and Manage Reference Elements and Create and Manage Reference Tables. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We're talking about the Word 2019 exam, and we're looking at the fourth domain called Create and Manage References. Overall, this accommodates for 5 to 10% of the overall exam. We're looking at the first subdomain, Create and Manage Reference Elements. We're told that we should be able to insert footnotes and endnotes. To do that, we want to go to the References tab. Now, I want to caution you, by default, you probably think insert, but the insert tab is not where we want to be. We want to be on the references tab and on the references tab is where you're going to find all of your reference items. For this task, we're going to be in the footnote section and we have the option of inserting a footnote or we have the option of inserting an endnote. The difference between the two of these is for a footnote, you're going to find that at the end of a page most likely, whereas an endnote is at the end of a document or a chapter. For this, we're going to go ahead and select insert footnote, but note that the process is the same. And again, the only difference is one's placed at the end of this page, whereas the other ones can be placed at the end of a section. For this, we'll go ahead and type in Peter Pan and we've created our footnote. Sometimes on tasks like this, it will have you copy text from the document or cut text from the document. For example, if we wanted to copy Wendy's name and I went in here. You might want to right click for the paste and select text only. It's up to you on how you'd like to do that, but that might be something that you might want to consider if you get a task question like this. So we'll go ahead and do that. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to modify footnote and endnote properties. To do that, we want to be in our footnote or your endnote. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and go to note options. And that's going to bring up the footnote and endnote dialog box. Because this is a footnote, we have this radial button selected. And notice that we can change the location of it. We can do it below text or at the bottom of the page. And you're going to have options had this been an endnote. And we can actually click convert. And notice that we'll get a few more options as well. Some other things to note is you have the ability of changing the number format. You can apply a symbol. You can dictate how this is going to be applied. And when you're done, you can click insert. In addition to that, let's right click again because I want to look at style options as well. In this window, I have the option of changing a few things such as I can modify this, which brings open the style options and we can modify this further with things like the text type, the spacing, how it's aligned. You can click cancel there and we'll click cancel here as well. And I can access some of that here in the font and paragraph settings as well. Don't be afraid to dig on a question like this if you need to by right clicking or even at the top in the footnotes group, you can click the footnotes dialog launcher box to access some of these settings. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to create and modify bibliography citation sources. We're on the references tab still and we're in the citations and bibliography group. And what we're going to do is click the insert citation drop down. In this drop down, we actually have two sources. We can create a brand new source or we can add a placeholder. For this, we're going to click add new source, but you should also note that you can add a placeholder instead. In this window, we have the option of choosing our source. We're going to choose book for this, but as you can see, there's a pretty exhaustive list here. And whatever you select is going to give you specific fields. If you do not see the field that you need, you should click show all bibliography fields. And this will open up even further and you'll get more that you can key in. Let's just go ahead and type in a few of these fields. Now that we've typed in some information, while it's not complete, it'll work for this example. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And notice that it actually put the citation in my EndNote. And that brings up a good point. You want to make sure that your cursor is in the right spot before you create the citation so that it gets placed in the right spot. Of course, we could click and drag that up to another section. And in addition to that, we can click that drop down that we chose for insert citation and keep putting it in different places. 
now that we've created our source, we're told that we should also be able to modify this source. So if I select this and I click the drop down, I can edit my citation or source. And we have some other things that we can do. Or from the references tab in the citation and bibliography group, we can click on manage sources, which brings up this window. And from here, I can click on edit. And in our year, let me go ahead and add the year 1911. And we'll click OK. This window is just asking if we want to update all of our list. For this, we do. So we'll click yes and we'll click close. And notice that 1911 was added. Now that we've created a source and we've edited a source, maybe we want to insert that source in another part of the document. The last thing that this subdomain tells us that we should be able to do is to insert citation for bibliography. So we're going to put our cursor here in this fourth paragraph. And what we're going to do on the citation and bibliography group, we're going to click the insert citation drop down and we're going to select the source that we created. And notice it went ahead and added that for me. We're looking at the second subdomain called create and manage reference tables. We're told that we should be able to insert tables of contents. Currently, I have my cursor just underneath the heading contents. And on the certification exam, you're probably going to see something similar, whether it's a table of contents, bibliography, a table of figures. You're going to see a heading most likely, and you're going to have to put whatever they're wanting you to do underneath that heading. So with our cursor underneath, we're going to go to the references tab. Now, because we're inserting, you're probably going to think go to the insert tab, but you don't want to go there. You want to go to the references tab. And for this, we want to be under the table of contents. We're going to select table of contents drop down. You have a couple of built in ones that you can choose. So we'll go ahead and select automatic table one. And notice it went ahead and it populated that for me. And it's getting these chapters from my headings that I have the heading one applied to it. And if I apply different heading styles, it's going to apply that to this table of contents differently. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to customize the table of contents. Let's first add to this table of contents before we do that. I'm going to hit control F on my keyboard so that I can search for text in this document. And we're going to look for chapter five. What we're going to do is select this text and let's go ahead and apply heading two just so we can see that. And then I'm going to scroll all the way back up in my document. Within this, I have a few options. I can right click on it and click update field. You can update the table and you see you get a couple of options. We'll update the entire table. But notice that chapter five is now listed, but it's indented. That's because we applied the heading two style instead of the heading one. These heading styles up here are important when creating a table of contents. But we want to look at customizing the table of contents. So let's go back to the references tab. We're in the table of contents group. And where we want to look for this is underneath the built in ones. We want to select custom table of contents. And in here, you have quite a few options, such as showing page numbers, write a line. We can change our tab leader. Maybe we want dashes. We have our formats. Maybe we want fancy. So we'll select that. We can select the show levels. And you also have this options box. And you can change the table of contents level. If you scroll through this, you can apply different things by just putting in a number. You can also reset. We'll leave this alone. We'll hit cancel. And for this, we'll click OK. It's asking, do you want to replace the table of contents? Yeah, we do for this. We'll click OK. And notice it went ahead and updated all of that information for us. And the last thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to insert bibliographies. Let's put our cursor below this table of contents here. We're going to go back to the references tab. We're in the citations and bibliography group. If we click the bibliography drop down, we have the built in ones. And you can choose a bibliography, references, or works cited page. But you can also click here, insert bibliography. And it went ahead and it populated like this. That's different if I click enter and choose the built in one. While the information is the same, it's presented in a different way. On the exam, just read carefully. Make sure you're inserting the table of contents or the bibliography the way that they want you to insert it.